Wiz Prime has finally been released. Did she change in any way? Nah, she's just got a new skin. Have the builds changed? Absolutely not. She can still perma CC enemies. Yes, even Eximus units. Casually hit 2 billion damage, cause she can. So yeah, still a strong, solid Warframe. What's good folks, it's Nightmare Frame here with a new Warframe video coming at you with some of the most powerful Wisp Prime builds. This is a collection of builds that uses various pieces of gear to have her kit be taken to the next level. Now, comparing her Prime to the normal variant, as you can see she got that juicy 25 more armor and shields, a whopping 0.05 more sprint speed. Uh-huh. So again, nothing important, and Prime Warframes are just cosmetics, as people should know that by now. The only main differences are the Prime weapons. As I have discussed her kit several times over on other videos, which I will link to, that means I'll skip over her abilities and go straight into the builds. All of these builds will be replacing her most useless ability, the fourth. And this build requires two Amber Shards for the casting speed increase, because Wisp without casting speed feels like a slug and the last three slots can be whatever you want. First build is using her Breach Surge and a modular melee to output insane amounts of damage, hitting into the billions. So, how is this done? First off, I'm using the Helmet ability Eclipse as a weapon damage multiplier. This ability will calculate your total outgoing damage from the weapon and multiply it right at the end. A juicy final damage multiplier. However, it is limited by one important thing, your light surroundings. More more intense light equals more damage, so the number you see isn't always the accurate representation of your damage buff. I'm also pairing this up with my favorite Zaw, a modular melee, built from the Bala Strike, Paye Grip, and the Varjeet to Jai Link. This is more in favor of attack speed and crits. Pair this with the Arcane Exodia Contagion, and you will unleash chaos. By simply being mid-air, aim, and then executing your melee, you release a projectile that scales off your weapon stance, mods, and distance to the enemy. So the further away you are, the more damage you deal. This distance caps out at 30 meters. So yeah, Eclipse affects the weapon to then affect the projectile it shoots out to do a lot of damage. However, that's not all. Exotic Contagion and Breach Surge also scale from another modifier, external base damage modifiers, such as Arcane Arachne and Vigorous Swap. Arachne is a base damage multiplier, just like Vigorous Swap. However, it only affects guns and does not work on melees. However, it does affect thrown melee projectiles, meaning it can boost Exotic Contagion's projectiles damage, where it applies multiplicatively to your damage mods and not additively. So, another small eclipse alongside your eclipse. And the best part is that it also affects Surge Sparks, since Breach Surge is coded as a weapon, and Arachne boosts its base damage, and Arachne is then multiplicative with ability strength. This also applies with Vigorous Swap, but this mod works pretty much everywhere, and it's more flexible. I'm giving you these two options as people tend to not like weapon swapping or wall latching every 30 seconds. So pick either one that suits your playstyle, or just have them both. But for this particular build, I'm only using Vigorous Swap. So for the Arcanes on the build, I'm using Molt Augmented for that 60% additional strength after 250 kills. And Arcane Energize for the Energy Regen on Orb Pickup. To replace this, you need three Tau Amber Shards for the best performance. So this way, when you do replace it, you can use different Arcanes, like Arachne for even more damage. And of course, I'll be using two Dexterity Arcanes on my primary and secondary for the combo duration, as this is going to be the main way to maintain my combo. All right, let's take a look at the build. In the aura, I have Holster Amp. This functions exactly like Vigorous Swamp, but at a lower percentage. Strength at 243% with Blind Rage and Umpral Intensify. You can also add three red shards for even more strength. Up to you. Range at 145% with Archon Stretch. This grants me 45% additional range and energy over time if enemies are hit with an ability that procs electric. And that, of course, is coming from my moats. Fused Reservoir is her best in slot augment, allowing her to cast all three moats with a single button. Vigor Swamp and Holster Amp for the additional multiplier on the Contagion projectiles. 
And for the Bala build, going to focus on a lot of raw damage, crits, and elements. With Blood Rush, Sack Steel, and Glad Might, I'll be hitting 278% crit chance, so 78% chance to red crit. Pair that up with a 5 times critical damage multiplier and a faction mod, this will boost my damage even further. But that's not all. I'll be pairing this combo with an Epitaph, my primer. As you prime enemies before unleashing your contagion, the Epitaph will apply status effects and these status effects can armor strip enemies. So modding for corrosive and heat on your Epitaph will reduce the enemy armor, but not fully stripping them. So your Zal modded for corrosive can deal even more damage. But wait, there's more. The Epitaph got buffed with the recent changes to cold, making it the best primer in the game. You're going to essentially do more damage because enemies affected by the cold status effect will take increased critical damage and the Epitaph quick fire force procs cold. That means you don't have to mod for it, and you can still proc cold. Alright, moving on to the second build. Literally the best crowd control loadout on Wisp you will ever see, as it has so many layers to what it can do. This build can be used for survival, mobile defense, interception, defense, and even defecation. That's exactly how you pronounce it. The helmet ability on this is going to be Resonator from Octavia. This is another layer of crowd control that turns off enemy AI. It's an invulnerable ball that emits a charming aura, which halts any enemy aggression. Its only weakness is Overguard which isn't even a problem here, since Breach Surge can blind Xmas units. This build has a lot of range, bringing my modes to 39 meters of effectiveness, meaning the Shock Motes has a lot of reach, and when you pair that up with her second ability, which can pick up motes, it reaches even further. For additional crowd control, I'm using Parazon Mod Synergies. Starting off with Blood for Energy, this gives you 50% chance to drop energy orbs when you mercy kill enemies, and this will be more effective during your engagement on Xmas units. And with the Out of Sight mod, mercy killing those Xmas units will blind enemies within an 18 meter radius. But once you're done with a mercy kill, now you have a 100% chance to gain 50% additional strength on your next ability cast, thanks to Power Drain. For my damage, I'm using the same dagger paired with Amalgam Argonite. Metal Augur. This mod allows each hits with a single-handed dagger to armor strip a target by 6 armor. This is base armor and not scaled armor, so it works different from Corrosive Projection and similar to Shattering Impact. However, these hits by daggers also take into account the damage over time that they deal. So any DOT works with this, but there are two elemental DOTs that are AoE and linger within the area, and that's Electric and Gas. Both are instantaneous procs and immediately starts dealing DOT and pronking within the area. However, gas is interesting as it scales even more if there are a lot of enemies, and even better if all of these enemies are grouped up, as each hit that procs gas creates gas clouds, and if enemies die, they leave their gas clouds behind. And additionally, gas clouds are able to headshot, pairing well with Breach Surge. Unfortunately, they don't have a headshot damage multiplier. For the Arcanes, this build will be using the same as the first build except I replace Energize with Arcane Eruption for the additional crowd control. As soon as you pick up an energy orb, you knock down enemies within a 30 meter radius with no line of sight requirements and this arcane has no cooldown. Additionally, for the pilot arcanes, I'm using Magus Anomaly. Performing a transference pulls in enemies towards me. This is going to be really good for my gas AoE. And Magus Lockdown, only used for acolytes to hold them still so you can destroy them. And the recommended focus school for this is Xeneric. Alright, now that you have an idea of what I'll be using, let's get on with the build. In the aura, I have Growing Power. This grants me 25% strength whenever I proc a status effect on a target. Range at 265% with Archon Stretch, Augur Reach, and Overextended. This increases my Shock Mode's reach and my Resonator Charm Radius to 39.75 meters. And Breach Surge Blind Radius to 47 meters. And that will be extended even further thanks to her second ability. Ability. With overextended, I now end up with lowered power strength. So to counteract that, I'm using Blind Rage. Pairing up Blind Rage, Growing Power, and Molt Augmented at max stacks, along with the Xeneric Focus School, I can end up with 244% strength. And of course, if you do a Mercy Finisher, you will get that 50% extra strength from Power Drain. Primed Continuity for the decent duration on my abilities and Flow for the large energy pool. 
Taking a look at the Argonac build, it has three mods. Amalgam Serration is only for the 25% increase in sprint speed and nothing else. Amalgam Metal Ogre for the armor strip with daggers. Aero Periphery, damaging enemies while in the air, will put five enemies to sleep for three seconds when you land. You know, just for that additional crowd control, because why not? Moving on to my dagger, modded like a basic crit focus elemental damage melee with no attack speed mods because I get 1.17 attack speed and additional attack speed from the haste mode, freeing up an entire slot. And because it's a Zaw, I can equip the Exodia Contagion Arcane. This Zaw Arcane only works with condition overload if it's on a direct contact hit, so the AO explosions do not get the bonus. The third Wiz build is centered around lingering DOT weapons, as it requires tight grouping of enemies to then melt them down with lingering damage. Prime example is Gas, and this leads us to our helmet ability, Ensnare from Korra. This grouping ability can pull in enemies all over and can be recasted, and clumped up enemies are also movable with Magus Anomaly and Exodia Hunt. But as I explained earlier, Gas scales even better with grouping, so this fits perfectly for any weapon modded with gas or literally any lingering DOT that requires tight grouping. I'll be using the combo of the mod Combat Discipline and Arcane Avenger. Discipline is an aura that damages my health as it heals allies. This self-damage is to trigger Arcane Avenger, which only triggers when I take damage to then give me 45% flat crit on all of my weapons. And since Wisp has a decent amount of crowd control and ensnare crowd controls enemies even further, they don't get the chance to hit me to trigger Avenger. And plus, I don't want to take any damage from the enemies. So this combo is perfect. The best part is that her moats heal her, so perfect synergy to keep ourselves alive. Taking a look at the build, combat discipline and the aura for the self damage to trigger Avenger, and pretty much the same loadout as the first build, but replace Vigor Swamp with Augur Reach for even more range. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. This build pairs well with weapons like Mutilus Cernos, since it has AoE toxin clouds that spawn and deal AoE damage that can overlap, stack, and keep dealing damage over time. A Gas Serata. This glaive has the highest damage output of all glaives, and it's in a toxin, so one mod will form gas, and it force procs toxin on its explosion, so you can have gas and toxin. Also, a Latron Incarnan using the armor strip with the puncture procs, having the projectiles ricochet within the clump of enemies to melt them down while armor stripping them. Weapon choice is up to you at this point. And the final build, a more brain dead build, where I can have my Kuvazar or Brahma be spammable like crazy. Using the helmet ability Energized Munitions. While this ability is active, it grants all my guns 75% ammo efficiency, meaning I have 75% chance to not consume ammo. This percentage does not scale with anything, and the duration is at a base of 5 seconds, and requires a decent amount of duration to last slightly longer. The build uses specific auras. You can either use Rifle or Sniper Scavenger. Brahma is coded as a sniper, so it requires the Sniper Scavenger aura, while Zar uses Rifle Scavenger. The two auras increase ammo pickup rate of the weapons. Taking a look at the build, I dumped a lot of duration in here to take it up to 306%. This completely kills my range, but since this is an AoE spam build, I will kill everything, and Wisp can double tap her second ability for invulnerability. With this much duration, I get 15 seconds on energized munitions. Yeah. That little. DE hates ammo, but I have enough strength to give me a decent amount of fire rate and movement speed. Since this build doesn't have range, I decided to go for more of a health tank build. I can get a decent amount of health from reservoirs, and Arcane Guardian will be a decent amount of armor to boost my survivability. Pair that up with Adaptation to give me some damage reduction, as this build is catered to very, very early steel path and quick missions. For the Kuva Brahma and Zar, you will want a Toxin Progenitor. A Toxin Progenitor literally gives you an additional mod slot, so you can add more utility or damage. Taking a look at the Zar build, a simple hunter munitions build, crit chance crit damage, with one elemental mod, prime cry rounds to give me viral, and my utility mod is prime fast hands for that additional reload speed, as this weapon needs a lot of it. 
Moving on to the Kuva Brahma build. And this build is quite similar. Since I don't need reload speed, I did replace Prime Fast Hands with Vile Acceleration for even more fire rate. And of course, both mods have ammo mutation in the Exilus, while I went with Prime Sniper ammo mutation on the Brahma. And for additional utility, I'm using the Praetus for the increase in sprint speed, just to make me move faster. And for my Sentinel, I do have the Carrier Prime. As this Sentinel increases my ammo capacity and increases my ammo pickup rate. And since this is a Sentinel, I can use a primary Sentinel weapon so I can equip the Vigilante mods to increase my chances of hitting an additional critical tier to boost my damage output. Alright folks, these are the Wisp Prime builds. Hopefully you can try out these builds, have fun, and do crazy amounts of damage. Anyway, that has been it for me. I do hope you've enjoyed and learned something from this video. If you did, feel free to leave a like, share, and subscribe for more Warframe content streams and so much more. Do refer to the description. Thanks for watching, and as always, peace. Uh, bye bye now.